This video is about finding the reciprocal of a quadratic function. But first I recommend watching the other videos on how to find the reciprocal of a quadratic function, because this is a special case. It would also help if you knew how to complete the square of a quadratic formula in standard form. Nonetheless, let's get started. We start by writing the equation as a reciprocal function, and then it says can we factor f at x? Well, we can factor in the sense of f at x would be the same as taking out a negative and we get x squared minus 6x plus 10. And so can we factor means can we multiply to 10 and add to negative 6? The only possibilities are 1 and 10 or 2 and 5. And as you play around with the signs, you know they have to be both negative in order to multiply to a positive and add to a negative, you'll quickly see that it doesn't in fact factor. So our only option that's left to us then is to complete the square. We do that by writing the equation first, so f at x equals, and let's start with the original equation, negative x squared plus 6x minus 10. The first step for complete the square is to factor out from the first two terms. So we get negative x squared minus 6x, and we leave the minus 10 on the end. Again, it helps if you know how to complete the square. We're looking for the x term coefficient, which is negative 6. We divide it by 2, and we get negative 3, and we square that, and we get 9. So we write negative x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9. I'll take away 10. So you get negative, now complete the square, first three terms, it's x minus 3 all squared, and pull this minus 9 outside the brackets, times it by what's in front, and don't forget to take away 10. So our final completed the square equation will have plus 9 minus 10, or negative x minus 3 squared minus 1 which means the vertex, I think I'll put it over here, the vertex is going to be opposite sign of this at 3, same sign as that, negative 1. So there's our original graph. At least, we're going to need to graph the original graph, which requires a ruler. Here's one. Let's go ahead, draw the y-axis, that was a bit diagonal, and the x-axis. Okay, okay. We can put the vertex at 3. Oh, better put my scale. I know how important it is to have a good scale that the reader can easily read. So right now we're just setting up our graph so that we can put the original equation, the original f at x, on the graph. The original equation has a vertex at 3, negative 1, that's here. And I know from its negative coefficient, its step pattern will be negative 1. So that's going to put over 1, down 1, over 1, down 3, and over 1, down 5. So, did I count right there? Over 1, down 1, over 1, down 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, yep, okay. Do the same thing on the other side, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 3, over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And draw the original parabola. You can label it with its equation, or you can label it by just simply writing, this is f of x. Well, that's the graph of the original, onto the graph of the reciprocal. We can write the equation now in vertex form if we want. It doesn't matter. You can write it again, which is we already wrote it up here in standard form. Vertical asymptotes. Well, we know there's vertical asymptotes wherever there's zeros, but in this case, there are no zeros. Therefore, on the original, 
Therefore, there are no asymptotes on the reciprocal, except for the horizontal asymptote, of course. There's no vertical asymptotes, but there's always that classic horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And we know that the parabola will share the points with the reciprocal where y is 1 and y is negative 1. And finally, we take the reciprocal of the vertex, leave the x the same, but flip the y under 1, which is 1 over negative 1, which is the same as negative 1. Again, if you're wondering how I got that, I just put negative 1 under 1, which is the same as negative 1. So my reciprocal vertex happens to be the same, but I've got this horizontal asymptote right along the x-axis at y equals 0. So what does my equation look like? It looks like stay really close to the asymptote the whole time. It should be a nice straight line. And then right when you come close to the reciprocal vertex, come up in a little loop, a little hoop here, and then head back down right away. And that's a strange shape, but is indeed the shape of a reciprocal of a parabola when that parabola has no zeros.